Welcome to the inaugural Rackets and Runners Pickleball End of the Year Award Ceremony. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So I already made this joke on the tennis channel, but I'm going to make it again. Somebody from Rackets and Runners watched too much of The Office because our year-end awards are called The Rundies. Okay, to be honest, that's a pretty sick name. Anyways, it's been another crazy year for pickleball growth, and I did just want to take a second to say from the bottom of our hearts, thank you so much for your support this year. Whether it's been on our website, on the YouTube channel, on our Instagram, or really anywhere else, we've definitely felt the love this year, so thank you very much. It's also helped us that paddle manufacturers have been releasing banger after banger because the paddle landscape we have now is very different to what it was 365 days ago. There have been countless releases this year, which means that this is going to be one of the most competitive award ceremonies ever for anything, really. Okay, that might be a bit of a stretch, but we're going to be covering the best paddles for a variety of different categories. But before we get into any of that, remember that any of the paddles we're talking about here today, you can check out on our website, racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments section what you want me to cover next. Like I said, this is going to be a super competitive award ceremony, so there is bound to be some controversy. So before we go on, I need to address a couple of things. For one, we don't carry every single paddle. We try to carry as many as possible, but we can't carry everything. And because we are a retail store, we don't always get paddles as quickly as we'd like. Keep that in mind for one of these categories. And also remember that this is mainly my personal opinion. Now I try to be as objective as possible, but bias will always come through. If you disagree with anything I say, let me know in the comments and we can have a nice little discussion. Without further ado though, let's get into it. Let's start with spin because that's without a doubt the category that has seen the most improvement in 2023 and that's in most part thanks to the development of thermoformed unibody paddles. Thermoformed paddles are extremely rigid so the transfer of energy from your stroke through the paddle into the ball is as seamless as possible. When you play with a thermoformed paddle you almost feel like you can grab onto the ball and manipulate its spin exactly as you would want so as you can imagine you can hit with plenty of spin. There have been tons of thermoformed paddles released this year but the one that stands out for me is the Vatic Pro Flash. It's thermoformed and has a Torre T700 carbon top sheet, so as you would expect, its spin is incredible. But what separates it from almost every other paddle out there is this unique hybrid shape. It's 16.3 inches long, so it sits somewhere in between a standard and an elongated paddle length, which means that you get most of the top end spin and leverage of a longer paddle with the maneuverability and whip ability of a shorter one. This is why, for spin variety, there is no better paddle, other than maybe one. You can hit powerful, spinny ground strokes, but it's also fantastic for flicky roll volleys at the net. It's also a lot easier to scramble and still hit spin with this thing because you don't need as much time to set up your shot, again, because it's more maneuverable. Of course, there's the 6-0 double black diamond, which is extremely comparable to the Flash, but I've played with both of them for most of the year, and the Flash always seems to come out on top just a little bit in terms of spin. Earlier I mentioned that we don't always get paddles right away and this is the category it's most likely going to affect because I've heard a lot about the Gearbox Pro Power paddles. Unfortunately, we just haven't received them yet. So that means I can't talk about them or acknowledge them, so I'm going to pretend like they just don't exist and that I haven't seen all the reviews talking about how good their power is. And instead, I'm going to talk about our pick for the best power paddle of the year, the Yola Hyperion C2 CFS. Pretty much every thermoformed unibody paddle has great power, but the C2 stands out above the rest because it also has fantastic feel and a bigger sweet spot than average for this style of paddle. I do just want to say, Yola paddles sometimes get a bad rap for being too expensive and not always perfect, but there are some things about their paddles that are just better than others. Their core feels amazing, and that hyperfoam edge guard is just a cut above the rest of the industry's stabilization technologies. So, as much as I wish their paddles weren't as expensive, there really is no denying their quality. It's just that little extra X factor that they have that a lot of other paddles don't, and I think that's part of the reason why so many pros play with their paddles. Also, to be a good power paddle, you basically need good spin. Power is great, but only if you can control it, and the C2 has some of the best spin for a unibody thermoform paddle right now. Now, to be fair, this section is pending evolution with the Gearbox Pro power paddles. Just putting that out there to defend myself. Control was not a point of emphasis this year. Brands were putting most of their R&D on spin and power because they became such buzzwords, so it would be normal to expect that we don't have any good control paddles. That would be incorrect. Honestly, this paddle recently came out, but the more I play with it, the more I think the Selkirk Lux Control Air Invicta might just be paddle of the year 
We'll see when we get there. This is by far the easiest Rundy to give, by the way. There admittedly wasn't much competition, but even if there was, I don't see what could rival this paddle. So yes, the control is amazing. It's a 20 millimeter thick paddle that feels like an absolute cheat code when it comes to dinks, resets, and drops, but those types of paddles have been around for a while. Where the control errors separate themselves to every other control paddle out there is in their well-rounded playability. Soft, thick paddles like this have lost a lot of their popularity because they lack feel and responsiveness when going for faster paced shots. The control errors aren't quite as responsive as 14 and 16 millimeter thermoform paddles, but they are in a completely different galaxy to every other paddle this good for control. Honestly, after a brief period of adaptation coming from months of playing with thermoform paddles, I felt complete confidence going for big spin shots, which I never would have expected from something so soft. I have to give it to Selkirk. They have so much confidence in themselves that despite all the hype being around power and spin, they didn't release anything along those lines and instead went in the complete opposite direction with these paddles. They do their own thing and the control errors are proof that they should really keep doing that. Okay, now obviously this isn't an award that you would want, but I need to preface this by saying that this paddle is not bad by any stretch of the imagination. The only reason it's the most disappointing paddle is because there was a ton of hype surrounding it and it didn't quite live up to that hype, and if you've watched some reviews you probably already know it's the Yola Perseus CFS 16mm Ben John Signature Paddle. Of course, many people love this paddle, and I completely understand why, but it is disappointing when you consider the expectation we had for it versus the reality of its playability. The Perseus released when thermoform paddles like the Double Black Diamond, Carbon 1X Powers, and Vatic Pro Flashes were taking over the industry because of their power and spin. When Yola released the marketing for the Perseus, we saw that it too was thermoform, so we all started expecting similar playability, but that's not exactly what we got. It has noticeably less spin and power than all those paddles, and that was the real disappointment, but once we got used to that, we were able to better judge the Perseus on its own merits. The reason it has less spin and power is because it's softer, so it's a paddle that performs much better in the soft game, which is logical considering it's Ben John's paddle of choice. Basically, the Perseus is just a victim of circumstance. It came out at a time when all anyone cared about was power and spin, but it was one of the first paddles that started coloring the lines between power and spin paddles and control paddles. We just weren't ready for it at the time. Okay, we're going to switch gears here to a more fun award and hand out a Rundy for the best looking paddle of the year. One of the things that has been a little annoying with the rise of raw carbon thermoform paddles is that they kind of all look the same. Don't get me wrong, the all black raw carbon look is sleek, but it does get a little boring after a while. That's why I was so excited when I took out the Pickleball Apes Proline Energy Paddles out of the box. The design is still fairly understated, which is good because if the face is too busy, it kind of just gets in the way, but there's no denying it. The black carbon and red Kevlar weave look so good and so premium. There's just something about looking at this paddle when you're holding it that feels so pro, and it really stands out in the sea of raw carbon paddles. Good job, Pickleball Apes. Back to serious business though. We've had so many amazing paddles come out this year that crowning one as the best is not only nearly impossible, but also so controversial that I barely wanted to do this, but here we go. I've given this a lot of thought and played with this individual paddle so much just to make sure that I'm not just living in the honeymoon period, but the best pickleball paddle of 2023 is the Rhombus R1 Nova, and yes, I know this is the R3 Nova, I picked up the wrong paddle. Either way, R1 Nova, R3 Nova, you can't really go wrong, but to me, the R1's shape just provides a bit more variety at very minimal cost. The Nova is so special because between January and May, the industry went all in for power and spin with very little regard for softness and control. Most players, including myself, were very happy with that, but the manufacturer's next challenge was clearly going to be combining power, spin, control, and softness without sacrificing much of any of them. That's where the Nova is truly elite, and maybe not in a tier of its own, but up there with the Pickleball Apes paddles and the Lux Control Airs. Rhombus created a fantastic, innovative molding process where they were able to soften up the feel of the Nova without sacrificing much spin whatsoever. Power is noticeably lower than it is on the most powerful Gen 2 thermoform paddles, but it's still very high, and that's a sacrifice that a lot of high-level players will be more than happy to make for a significantly better control profile. Now briefly touching on the Proline Energy, that paddle is comparable to the Nova because it is softer and still elite for power and spin, but it accomplishes that with a more muted feel. I personally prefer the more pockety feel you get from the Nova's edge grid design, but it is more of a personal preference type thing, so if you prefer that muted feel, the Proline Energy might actually be better for you. I also just wanted to touch on the control errors, because 
I had a very difficult time picking between them and the Nova. But to me, the Nova just represents consumer preference in terms of power and spin a little bit better. And that's why these have got to be number one. So that's it for our inaugural Pickleball Rundies on YouTube. I hope you enjoyed the video and I know there will be a lot of controversy. So please don't hesitate to let me know your thoughts in the comment section. For now though, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that if you want to demo any of the paddles we talked about here, you can come visit us in store or you can check them out online at racketsandrunners.ca.